The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear. So many choices. Oh, we no function fear well without. Woohoo! Fear! Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Busters, where you know it, we're going to bring you the news and reviews of your favorite brews. My name is Dan Baker and I am joined by my co-host and brewologist, Steph Hefner, and the Demented and Fermented, Wayne Baker. You may have noticed there is no background noise. It's quiet. Gee, I wonder what that means. What does that mean? That means we're home. We're in the basement. We're in the basement. This is where it all started and uh, took a... Hell of a time to get here. Thanks a lot, Philly traffic. Uh, but here we are. Very excited. The beer's already flowing. Granted, uh, it is a sipping beer that is related to a guest we had on previously, which we'll get into that in a little bit. But this episode features a uh, local brewery in the Reading area, one of the, the newest that we have. And uh, I'm very excited to have some of the beers. I actually have not had any of your beers yet. And oh, wow. I am, I am so sorry. Uh, I don't get back to the area as often as right. I would like. And when I do, the free time is very limited. But we have joining us... Todd Bray. Todd, thank you so much for being here. Todd is from Broken Chair Brewing in West Reading. Broken Chair Brewery. Brewery, Brewery yes. I apologize. Broken That's Chair right. Brewery. Uh, but we're super excited to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm glad to be here. There's a lot that we're going to get to, and I, 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 I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. Um... For you out there in, in the podcast land, of course, you can uh, find us on the internet beyond your podcast app of choice, uh, beerbusterspodcast.com, Beer Busters Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are at Beer Busters. There is uh, that phone number that's probably going to be retired soon because nobody uses it. It was a fun experiment while it lasted. You know, we need to give people like a reason to call. We need to have like- We need to go back to- remember when we used to do contests? I was just going to say a contest or- yeah, or like a specific like call to action. We'll figure it out. You know, as the marketers yeah, the, say, the phone number's taking. Here hiatus. we go. I oh? no, wait. I have the first one. Call us and tell us what we should have you call us about. <laughs> right? That is I sure. I think that's a good idea. Maybe a contest. It. Maybe we'll give give away something. What would I'm trying to get you... rid of those stupid t-shirts? Yeah, so. we have some t-shirts <laughs> left. Yes, yeah, so as long in... as you're a, of a particular size, <laughs> the most popular. No, sizes. we have. No, you we, might not be able to get the shirt you want, but I have shirts well, in every size. So the the last episode too, we uh we had a thing. I forget what it was. Uh, maybe we'll get by the time this episode comes out, we'll get answers to the question that we asked last time, which I forget what it was. But yeah. it was you get a shirt, and if we don't have a shirt in your size, we will buy you two beers at the next recording. Yeah, at. and then I told you that two beers are going to cost us more than we paid it for a shirt. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, you got to spend money to make money, right? I'd rather spend the money on two beers. Okay. Anyway, we're call drinking me, a beer. Please, I'm so lonely. 805-991-BEER. 805-991-2337. We are drinking a beer, Steph, and we'll talk about that in a second, but don't forget Patreon. Patreon.com slash Beer Busters. We have some there new is, patrons We do have new patrons. You will get your roll shout call out. shout out. But also, this episode of Last Call will have the newest feature for Happy Fun Time Games. Yes. The loser is going to get a punishment. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. This idea, uh, I, it took a long time to actually come to fruition. We talked yep. about it a while ago, but here we are. Uh, we're not going to let the cat out of the bag quite yet, because I know Steph doesn't know either, and Todd does not know what it is either. He doesn't know what he's in for. I <laughs> hope I don't lose. Can't wait. <laughs> you can, yeah, I honestly say that about everybody who sits down on our podcast for the first time. That's true. <laughs> That's true. But if you want to see uh, what the punishment is, you want to find it out, we may also film it and release it on our Patreon feed. That is sort of to be determined. We need a stinger. We do need a stinger. Get punished. Oh, God. Well, that that's going to be part of it now. There you go. Patreon.com slash Beer Busters, and you can find out all about what this punishment is, and you can listen to it and possibly see it go down. Steph, we do have a beer. What is this beer? So back in episode 160, the last time we were in the basement. Oh, yeah. With um, Greg Orth. Um, we uh, had a phone interview with the folks from Holidayly Brewing Company, which is that awesome gluten-free brewery in Golden, Colorado, and they kept their word and sent us some beers. So I thought the perfect sipping beer for tonight would be Favorite Blonde, which is their Blonde Dale, of course, 5% ABV. And I was looking at the can, I'm like, this is really cute, like art. It almost looks like a little bit like the Jetsons. And I was trying to figure out what it is, and I'm reading the can, and, and the sort of caption on the can says, Grandpa was an optometrist who called his granddaughter and Holidayly founder his favorite blonde. Inspired by the man who helped others see the value of a good time, our blonde ale has a subtle hop character and mellow malt flavor. 
And I, I guess over here, I thought it was like a salon chair, but I guess it's like the chair you sit in when oh, you go to the eye doctor yeah. and there's the little thingy That's that, that they weird pull. Machine oh, yeah. that they put on your and face. And then over here, yeah. there's like a table with a really cool, it's like 70s mod furniture stuff though. It's like really cute art. I, that is really I love cool. It. I like that design. Like, and then the, the logo almost looks like the eye chart thing that you look at. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Which stresses me the hell out because you know I'm a perfectionist <laughs> and I have to get every letter, letter right and it stresses me out if I don't, but... Yeah, so yeah. this is super tasty and a great way to start the episode. And if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to that episode. Uh, one, because the episodes with Greg Orth are always a lot of fun. But two, Karen Hertz's story is incredible. And, and it's awesome that she could come out on top of such a, a trying backstory. Yeah, definitely. I think one of our most interesting and, and fun phone interviews. We've enjoyed all of them and that we've done. Kind of humbling, too. But yeah, but yeah, really cool story. Um, and I, this is gluten free and it's good. Like I, See, that's I, the thing. Really Gluten-free has a stigma. It's got yeah. a stigma that it can't be good, that it's a, a knockoff of, quote, real beer. But this is solid. This I'm is really great. quite enjoying it. This is well-balanced. I was going to ask, yeah. what are your thoughts yeah. on it were? Good. I'm glad yeah, to hear you well say balanced. that. It's well-balanced. I like this. And you mm. get, like, a, a nice grain character to it, even without, you know, the, the traditional uh, malts that would be used. Well, if we remember, they she is using locally malted gluten-free gluten-free grains. grains so yeah i mean and so not they, your traditional grains yeah, this but. one has millet and buckwheat in there you go. so i it, it, as opposed to just using sorghum or mm. right you now which there are breweries that have made amazing beers oh, of course bases but so we do have two other beers from them that you know who knows maybe we'll crack a few others open before the end of the night but uh i'm enjoying sipping on this one me too and i think it's going to be good to sip on as we get into the news <laughs> A lot's happened since last time we recorded a month ago. Yeah, man, the time warp that is podcasting. The time warp that is podcasting. We're back on like a normal schedule though now. Sort of, uh, <laughs> and it feels good to for, not be this for, for a bit until uh, until everybody goes on vacation. That's true. Yeah. You've got <laughs> we have to record a crap ton. Of yeah, you've got again. like a month. You're going to be away. I've got a week. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you uh, tell us when and exactly yeah. where you're both Would going, you like so our fans can come <laughs> and your hotels you're staying at and the room numbers. I'm staying with friends and family too. True. Why don't you give their exact addresses? I will. Yeah. I'll drop a pin. It's going on in the newsstand. Uh, breaking news: as of today, as of this recording, uh, which when you were hearing this, if you're hearing it fresh, was two weeks ago. Uh, remember that time a couple of years ago we reported the fact that Stone was opening in Germany? Yes. Yeah, that experiment's coming to an end. <laughs> Stone Brewing's lofty $30 million Germany brewery experiment aimed at converting Reinheitsgebot abiding German drinkers to the American craft beer. 1516. 1516. Hashtag. Has come to an end only a few years after it began. This feels weird, okay? This feels really weird because this is one of the first articles we've gotten to report on for a big expansion, and now we're talking about its closing. I don't know why, but the timeline is just messing up my mind right now because this is a beginning and end news story for us years apart. Yeah. yeah. Strange. Anyway, the San Diego headquartered company, ranked by the Brewers Association as the ninth largest craft beer producer in the U.S., has announced the sale of its Berlin brewing facility to Scotland's BrewDog. Terms of the deal were not disclosed, but BrewDog will begin occupying the space as of May 1st, 2019. You look confused. No, I just, uh, 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 I hadn't really looked into this story. I'd seen a couple... Uh, headlines here or there. I'm just shocked that Brewdog is I'm not is moving in where Stone failed. I I'm not think. not at all. Yeah, I I feel like since they're out of Scotland, they have a bigger print in Europe. I just I just feel like when I think of when I think of uh, of, of uh, craft beer brands that I think would have a chance of doing well in Germany, I would definitely think Stone before Brewdog. Well, Stone's but, a little left to center, and Germany yeah. is traditionally pure yeah. about well, their beers. Brewdog is very, Brewdog, very left of center. They're the ones that put. put mm-hmm. Bottles in, in taxidermied animals, right? That See? was true. I know. I asked them, and neither of them knew. We yeah. were was that the one? Yeah, one yeah. You, you were you were upstairs. That was at one point the strongest beer in the world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to Google what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, well. Uh, but you're right. You're right. I did not think of them, considering they are pretty left of center as well. But uh, yeah, Brewdog bought the spot. According to a post on the Brewdog website, the company will temporarily close the facility after they occupy it, which is located inside a historic. Shouldn't it be an historic technically? No. I mean, if you either if, way, if it's in Europe, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a forty-three thousand square foot gasworks complex, which was built in nineteen oh one, and quote turned the building into a brew dog space that is similar to the U.S. Brewing headquarters in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, according to Stone Brewing co-founder Greg Cook, 
We invested a significant portion of a decade and significant millions building Stone Berlin, and it didn't work out. These things hurt, and these things happen. This one happened, and this one hurts a lot. You know, I I have a theory. What's your theory? So, Greg Cook, for a very long time, was one of the most vocal and most apparent craft beer characters on social media, especially Twitter. And then he all of a sudden stopped shaving and stopped going on social media and he took like a year off or something like that and honestly I unfollowed him and I don't even know if he's back on or not but I almost wonder if his separation from social media affected Stone at all because I feel like in this day and age whether you're a business or a band or a celebrity of some sort or an athlete your presence on social media whether it's you or a computer or someone you pay to do it for you but your presence on social media and your connection with the people that are fans of whatever you are or whatever you produce is vital and I I've I've often thought about that and I wonder if that has had anything to do with their La- I don't want to say but lack of success or, because they're it, still successful, yeah, but I, it's just something I've always here, been curious yeah, about and yeah. I've never really vocalized it. That makes me think of a very important question. Todd, do you yes. have a Twitter account for the brewery? <laughs> uh, do not. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne is on a tirade because no brewery has Twitter so accounts anymore. When I go to post, um, like when we're, we, we, we post a little preview like the week before an episode comes out and then when it comes out and I post it on Twitter and I go to tag the brewery and there's no Twitter account. I just feel like so like, oh, <laughs> so it's fine. though. Th- yeah. n- they just won't ever know. Uh, but you're right. But also like Stone was. I'm, and I'm not saying that caused the, the Berlin no. brewery to fail. That's not what I'm saying. It's just something I've thought about. It's an interesting point. And Stone is sort of OG. Like Stone was yeah. the craft beer everybody knew before craft beer became so yeah. huge as it Them, is now. Yeah, Sierra Nevada. Know, sometimes anchor. when the founder of a company is not there, mm-hmm. the passion dies. I mean, you at that point, you're. You basically turned it over to someone who's managing your assets. Yeah. True. Um, and that manager, how you know, he might do a great job, but he may not be passionate about what he's doing. Right. You know, he's getting a paycheck. Yeah. Might be good with the numbers, but not. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and crap brews about the passion behind it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you disappear from it and it's your brewery, you know, I, I think you you are going to perish at some point yeah, yeah. It, it takes away the face to the name how long ago was it that they uh 2014 i think was the announcement wow five yeah. years yeah wow. mm-hmm. well yeah. i now, mean i haven't been t- it's been i think 2012 was the last time i was in germany but and i don't i'm sure the culture has changed in seven years but germany especially has a very specific beer culture there and yeah I, I just, while, especially in Berlin, you know, there are open-minded people. There are people in in Germany that are very interested in American craft beer. I just n- never really thought it would take on. I kind of hoped it did because I was like, well, that would be pretty cool to merge these two pretty amazing and diverse beer cultures. But I don't know. And like when I, one of my favorite things about drinking in Germany is I'm separated from that American craft beer culture. I love that idea of... You go to the local pub, you drink the beer that they brew for that pub, and you like it. Like, <laughs> you don't get a big, huge yeah. menu and, oh, what do you want? What's uh, new? I, what you, no, this is the beer you drink right. when you're in this town and you're at this pub. And I, that's what I we get drink. The, the sense that that's a very, you're, I think I'm not as well traveled. I've never been. But when we talked about cider, when we were at Current, and we talked about how in the UK, cideries are very much like this local farm makes cider, and you go there and you buy it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's like a, 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 a very European culture where everything is you don't you don't get the stuff that came from a thousand miles away when you when it comes to things. And, like, and, I, and I'm not saying one is better than right, the other. Yeah, oh yeah, I yeah, appreciate yeah. them both equally. I love going to a beer bar and be able to choose from crazy beers from all over. But I also really, really appreciate the culture in Germany. But I'd be I don't know. It's been I need to get back over. It's been a while, but I'd be curious to hear what. Germans think of stone. Well, a uh, quote from Jeff Allsworth, who is a uh, a beer writer, who was very vocal on Twitter, but the article I have quotes him as saying, it's no surprise that the project failed given the contempt in which stone is held in its new country. The oppositional approach that worked so well in Calif- California didn't sell in Berlin, but instead of asking hard questions about why the brewery didn't achieve the volume it needed, Cook blames the Germans instead. Oh, hmm. not nice. No, not at all. It's a weird, weird mark on the history of stone brewing. And I also think they just went too big too soon. Like, 
Yeah, like, thirty million dollar brewery. Like yeah, for like forty you said, something thousand square feet. That's exactly yeah, exactly what it was. Exactly, you got to test the water. Go they, in and try a little tiny pub with a little yeah, t- yeah. tiny system. See if people are into it. Like then, I mean, that would piss me off. I'd be like, really, you're gonna come and, and I don't know, right? You're gonna build this big brewery and think you're just gonna take over? Exactly. It was the ambition was there, but uh, it was too ambitious. In other news, uh, PBR is releasing a, not only a whiskey, they're releasing a whiskey in the summer, uh, but they're also going to release Blue Ribbon Extra. It's so extra. It's so extra. It's oh so boy. extra. Uh, they made headlines with the whiskey, and now they're releasing a uh, a spin on the boozier version of the 175-year-old lager, Pabst Blue Ribbon Extra, which is going to clock in at 6.5% alcohol by volume. It's going to be found in black cans. Wow. Can and, uh, you handle it? Not at all. Built as a light, crisp, higher ABV alternative to heavy drinking beers, while regular PBR is about 4.74% yeah. ABV. Uh, this is the extra Pabst Blue Ribbon beer inspired by the original. Only the finest hops and grains have been used to create our strongest brew. Uh, it's going to debut in spring of 2019, and it's going to be available in 12-ounce cans and draft starting in the spring also releasing in the spring harpoon and duncan have teamed up for another beer what oh, really? i know you yes got my attention in the yeah. fall of 2018 the duo debuted harpoon duncan coffee porter according Pretty to solid beer yes it was I great it. yeah according to the brewery the beer was a big success among both harpoon and duncan fans well, and duh as the weather <laughs> of course the beer could have sucked at people would have right according it. to people who like us like <laughs> right. this thing we did yeah. uh, as the weather gets warmer pale ales become even more popular and the coffee summer pale ale has been born. Ooh, a coffee pale ale. Nice. Yes. I'll According to Dan Canary, who is the co-founder and CEO, we ended last year's baseball season with the intro of Harpoon Duncan Coffee Porter, and we're excited to begin this season with the release of our summer coffee pale ale. Most importantly, it's a delicious beer, hoppy and vibrant with a nice coffee character. We're thrilled to partner with an icon like Duncan again. Is there a picture of what the label's going to look like? It looks exactly the same, but it That's says Duncan Summer Coffee Pale Ale instead. Good for Duncan for making this. Yeah, that's cool. Relevant that's really forever. cool. Uh, we have a list. Oh, oh uh, all right. Here we go. Okay. Uh, we do it every year. Oh, okay. Any guesses? The top, top producing. Yeah, top the 50 craft breweries. Is it the top 50 sales by volume or is yep. it the top 50? Because they also did a, a, a list of breweries that grew the most. Yes, I was going to do that as well, but yeah, we're not, we're not going to have time. Uh, yeah. Bond yeah. Place was on that list. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, good for them. Uh, who wants to guess what number one is? Yingling. Of course it is. Who wants to guess what Sam no- Adams. Sam Adams. Who wants to guess what uh, number 45 is? <laughs> <laughs> Victory. Uh, 45, no, is Modern Times. Oh, wow. oh I love wow. Modern okay. Times. Uh, all right, I'm just going to pick out some ones oh, that we God. know this and love. This is the worst, worst radio ever. When <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> all right. Local Heroes Trogues, 27. Uh, Dogfish is 13. Brooklyn Brewery is number 12. All right, top 10 is Deschutes at number 10, Stone at number 9, which you already mentioned in the other article. Canarchy is number 8. Hmm. Bells Oscar is number Blues. 7. Gambrinus is 6. Duvel is 5. New Belgium is 4. Sierra Nevada, 3. 2 is Boston Beer, 1. DG, Yingling, and Sons and Daughters. And Daughters. Where, um, what is the Victory Southern Tier conglomerate called? Uh, in- I, I forget. forget. Independent something? Artisanal. Is it? Yes. Artisanal Brewing Ventures, number 11. The one I skipped over when I went with Dogfish Down and then did the top 10. Uh, yeah, they are number 11, which is... Uh, who's in Brooklyn with them? Who did they take on? Six oh, six hey, points. Oh, six Rich point. for the win. Nice. Wow. Nice. That's right. Good for them. Hmm, we should go there next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> We always go to Brooklyn on my birthday, when nice. my birthday's on the weekend. Nice. So we're going to Brooklyn on Saturday. Nice. Cool. Well, I hope you have fun with that. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see the whole list, you can head over to BeerBustersPodcast.com, and we will post it on there. That was a very long-winded uh, news segment. I apologize for that. There was just so much that happened, but now we have to get to the real matter at hand. Broken Chair Brewery from West Reading, Pennsylvania. Todd, thank you again for coming out here. Thank you for having me. And I want to point out, Todd only lives a couple miles from the Beer Busters podcast basement. Yes. <laughs> so Todd needs to just come out and drink with us whenever we record. <laughs> you can be an honorary patron yeah, and just come and hang out. more than happy to. That's awesome. <laughs> well, of course, welcome to the basement. Uh, like we said earlier, we, you, you don't know what you're in for, and I apologize in advance. <laughs> we'll behave. We, we should. We should. So we got to go back a couple of years. Uh, so Broken Share is family venture, right? 
It is a family venture. It's myself, uh, my wife, and my son, who do, who has done all the brewing for the last 10 months. That's awesome. Yep. How did the three of you decide that you wanted to not only go into business as a family, but a brewery as a family? Well, originally it started out as just me. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I was a home brewer for nine years, and I was about 52 and right around that time, Pennsylvania changed their law where you didn't have to have a restaurant as part of your brewery. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. Okay. And that was like the light that went on in my head because I wanted nothing to do with a restaurant. And, um, you know, I talked to my wife. She was on board with it. She, you know, she knew I always wanted to do it. So uh, my goal was to be brewing, uh, you know, in a place professionally by the time I was 55. Um. I brewed on September 16th, which was a day before my 56th birthday. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That is really admirable to make that change in your 50s. You know, there are so many people that are terrified to make changes in their 30s with their career, but man, that's, that's really awesome. And, and to set that goal for yourself and to achieve it way to be a procrastinator about it. I mean, let's be honest, but <laughs> <laughs> that's really awesome. Right but but I, I still have my other job. Mm. So, uh, but you know, it's, there were many weeks where I had 80 hour weeks going. I mean, it was yeah. just, uh, yeah, it was draining, but it was a good drain. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, you know, the first time we brewed was a 16 hour day. The next day was a 16 hour day. And then Monday through Friday, we spent six hours from uh, 5 o'clock to 11, mm-hmm. you know, making beer, filling up all the fermenters. And then uh, we got to rest because the beer had to had to ferment. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that takes yeah. some time. So then I started trying, you know, we worked on trying to figure out the paperwork. No, and, and then at that point, I'm sitting here, you know, this is way too much. I can't keep this pace up. And um, my wife started doing the QuickBooks which was about 10 to 12 hours a week. Wow. And uh, my son had just graduated from Westchester with a business degree. And I said, look, I'm going to have to hire someone. That's that's very apparent now. You got a business degree. You want to learn how so to run a small I business. Have a, I have a business. You have a business degree. I mean, <laughs> there you go. So uh, and Interview it, complete. Yeah. And it, it, and and it's, worked, son, so. it's worked out ever, you know, ever since. So, uh, you know, kind of a long answer, but that's how it, it just kind of morphed. Yeah. I like how you said you, you, you wanted to brew professionally uh, by the time you were 55. And instead of getting a job at a brewery, you're like, I'm just going to open my own yeah. place. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah. Why Why the choice to uh, open your own brewery instead of just brewing at an already established brewery? You know, I, uh, I wanted control over what I was doing. Uh, you know, if I, uh, at an established brewery, I got out, you know, I've got hours I've got to abide by and, you know, with me working the other job that was, you know, almost impossible to do. So, uh, you know, a lot of learning curves. I mean, tremendous amount of learning curves. I spent a lot of time on research and even then, you know, I missed a lot of things. So, you know, you know, like the first day the fermenters and bright tanks showed up, I'm looking at them and going, I don't know how the hell to put these together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there and I'm going, man, there's pieces everywhere. Yeah, I'm going, you what put the them hell? all together and you still have pieces left over. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, you know, a day later, I got the first one put together and it looked right. I took a picture of it, sent it to the manufacturer, and they go, "Yeah, you got it, buddy." Nice. So, <laughs> so from there, you know, it, it, it just kind of rolled, and uh, you know, the brewing process was the easier process. You know, but. Uh, you know, when you stage up like that, sometimes your agents don't do well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we dumped some beer, no doubt about it. You know, when you're using two uh, peppers and a mm-hmm. pepper beer and you try to scale that up and it looks like you need about a pound and a half, when actually you need six pounds. Yeah, it's, like, it's logarithmic, <laughs> not linear. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just, uh, so there were a lot of learning curves with that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as time went, the beer just kept getting better and better and better. Nice. And, and that was the, the big point. You know, we kept improving and making improvements. And cheers for having the integrity to dump the beer. Yeah. Instead I was just trying to that. sell it anyway. Not yeah. everyone does. First loss, best loss. You yeah. Know, yeah. I, uh, we just made a peanut butter beer. Duh. 
No, <laughs> peanut butter stout is oh. the god awfulest thing I've ever made in my life. Oh, really? okay. oh my god! You know, my son's trying to figure out. He said, "Dad, I think we can save this." And it's in the bright tank. It's carbonated, so he's getting ready to keg. And I said, "Let me see." I took the hose, I put it in the drain, I turned, turned <laughs> I turned the bright tank on. And I said, "We just saved it." Yep. <laughs> so. <laughs> Wow. So Do you funny. have any plans to revisit that one, or are you just going to um, We will revisit that, mm. but, uh, you know, it'll be a, little, a lot more research. Uh, yeah, I think I know where we went wrong and what we have to improve on. So, all, right. all right. Yeah. But it, it, it still takes the courage to, to dump the beer. That's, that's awesome that you're not selling something that isn't up to your standards. <laughs> Dumping no, the beer just, with one tier of the owner going down the drain. And another tier from yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it uh, it actually bothered my son, you know, who's do, who does the brewing, because he had his blood and sweat into that. It wasn't mine at that right. point. He, you know, it, it actually killed him, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine your first one going down. I remember when I dumped my first homebrew that didn't turn out right, and that was painful, and that was only a couple gallons of beer. Yeah. But, so um, you, you had this desire to brew professionally before 55, but there was also a little motivation behind it. You and I have talked about before about beers on taps at other breweries, and right. you know you sort of wanted to be in control of the types of beers that were being brewed as well and what you wanted to drink. Exactly. You know, we... Uh, you know, on the weekends, that's what uh, I did. My friends, my wife, you know, we went to breweries. We just liked doing it. You know, it was uh, craft beer's cool. So, you know, we went around the country and, you know, over the place. And uh, at some point, you know, I walked into place. This place was really neat. There were seven beers on tap and six of them were IPAs. Uh. You know, and I like IPAs. I don't want six of them. <laughs> And, you know, I don't even want to. I don't even want a sampler of six of them. Yeah. You know, you know? Yeah. So uh, at that point, started home brewing, and the first beer. I mean, started out with kits, mm -hmm. and moved up from there. But the first beer I ever made was a uh, an Irish Red, and then a Brown Ale, and both of those are still on tap today. Nice. Now they've changed quite a bit, mm -hmm. but uh, you know those are still there, and uh, I sell I actually sell a whole lot of those. Nice. That's good to hear. I, I like to hear breweries that are, are selling things that aren't necessarily the, the hippest, trendiest styles at the moment. But, 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 there is a little fact here that that I think we need to preface this A little this fact, way. but a big but. Todd, Todd has 24 taps at his... That's at, true. At his, Insane. You are not starved for brewery. choice. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and luckily you do. And I, I'm sure going into this, you had planned, I, you started out with what, like 16, 16 taps, and 16 now you've graduated taps. to 24 uh, in, right. in uh, not even a year and a half. Yeah, um, I had 16 taps, and one of, that, one of those was a cider that I didn't make. That's where I cried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I had to have a cider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do got to have a cider. But that does allow you to, of course, you know, for anyone that's worried, don't worry, Todd has plenty of IPAs <laughs> on, right. on draft and, and quite a variety of them. Um, but having that many taps does allow you guys to have the freedom to put such a variety of styles on. And I think that was the first thing. Even back, I think the first time I was there, you guys had 11 beers on tap. Um, and you still had qu quite the variety, but um, right. and you have a, a two barrel system, so that definitely allows you. Was that sort of the vision all along that you wanted to be able to brew a whole bunch of stuff and have a variety of stuff on tap at all times? You know, I that was the vision, uh, but then when I settled on a place and I looked at the ceilings where I was going to be brewing, that just doubled down because uh, big tanks just weren't an option. Yeah. So I, you know, what I did was buy smaller and bought more. Um, so I've got eight two-barrel fermenters and two two-barrel bright tanks. So, you know, um, right now all my fermenters are filled, and we try to keep them filled. Mm -hmm. You know, that way, uh, you know, when something kicks, there's something right behind it going in. Because, um, uh, you know, you got 24 taps, you got to keep 24 taps open yeah. or on at all times, so. So how often is Dan brewing in order to keep that flowing? You know, uh, there will be a couple week period where he's brewing probably ten to eleven days. Wow! And then, um, wow. and then he's got a couple weeks off, just waiting for stuff to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And and as it turns, you know, as it's ready to go, you know, we cold crash because I have a glycol chilled system, mm -hmm. which uh, makes my beer clear, and I don't have to. I don't have to filter it. And then we move that to the bright tank carpet, and he'll keg it. So he's got a, 
I call that his days off. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. Wow. He does it, but I do. But uh, so, uh, yeah, he's quite busy back there, uh, uh, you know, making the beer. And everything is stays in house still, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you at uh, least, do you have like crowlers and, and growlers to go or is uh, it? We have growlers. Well, obviously the growlers at the table. Uh, yeah, there. Speaking um, of growlers, won't we? Yeah, let's open it sure, up. Sure, might as well. We've open, mentioned it. it. it I, I promise that well, wasn't my, my segue to it, but I like this idea. I do too. This is a uh, coconut stout. This is our newest Ooh. creation. <laughs> Let's do it. So, well, in that case, I'm going to hit a button and make it official. Let's make it official. Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! Beer <laughs> me! We'll pass that, open. pass that down. And you know what? Can I get one of your branded cups so I can take pictures of oh, the beers absolutely. with your branded cup? Let I just get thought that. of that. Now, that one we actually made a test batch of, which we rarely do. So I ended up with about a keg and a half, and in a two-week period, that that was gone. Now, that's a lot of beer for us at one wow. time. Wow. When you got 24 taps. It, yeah. Is this Patsy's? This is Patsy's. Okay. Uh, from the movie uh, uh, Monty Python. Because <laughs> Pat, Patsy was clicking the coconuts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you, sir. Yeah. so that's why we call it Patsy's. Love it. <laughs> oh, you're handing me a beer. Actually, Thank that you. was uh, that was Daniel's idea. He's starting to name a lot of the beers Man, now. I, I I like the way this this Dan character <laughs> thinks. <laughs> yeah. It smells so does good. It? Ooh, it does. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. That is really nice. Oh. Mm, chocolate, coconut. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, this is delicious. It's so well balanced. Way to like get the coconut in there where it's it's prominent, but it's not over. It doesn't take over. You still get all of the other great flavors of the the beer. That's nice. Oh my god! Yeah, we put this uh, back on tap last night, and we had we just happened to have we don't often put things in sixtals, mm-hmm. but we had a sixtal of this. Uh, went through the entire sixtal last night, and um, you know got into the one of the halves already. Wow! Yeah. It's so good. This is really, really good. I love how the, the coconut comes out more after you swallow, and as time goes on, it just it's like, hey, there was coconut here. No, really, there was coconut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, 25 pounds in a two-barrel batch? 25 pounds of coconut? Toasted coconut, yes. Wow. wow. It's a lot of coconut. That's that amazing. Is. But it's not, it's mm. not like you said, like it's well-balanced. It's not overpowering. Right. It, is, it does kind of come out in the tail end a little more. Like You get that nice yeah. chocolate, chocolatiness up front, and then you get the coconut, but not yeah. super sweet, like just a nice... Fresh, right? And the, and the idea was not to be sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If I wanted it sweet, I'd have probably made a milk stout. Mm-hmm. Right. But uh, this has still got a little bite to it that a stout will have, along with that coconut flavor. Mm-hmm. You What's, could do so many fun variants of this. Yeah, like, I was I thinking that put, too. I kind of want to put a cherry in it. I was thinking like vanilla. Oh, vanilla would go good. Mm-hmm. Do you do like any firkins or anything at the brewery? Uh, not currently. No. Okay. This we, uh, would be a great beer. I'm going to yeah. throw this one out there for your very first one. <laughs> <laughs> Just as I, an uh, idea to float around. I, if if I do something, it's probably going to be with my uh, vanilla porter, which oh. is which is the which is the flagship beer. Yeah, and that your act- vanilla porter is still that one of actually my kicked last Saturday. Oh no, Dan it's just so brewed it Monday, so it'll it'll be back in action. And you're soon. still brewing it with actual fresh. Vanilla beans. Oh yeah, mm. five hundred dollars a pound. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. gonna say that's it may, not but cheap. It, <laughs> yeah. it, you taste it though; it makes yeah. such a difference. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Now, you know, uh, maybe the other reason I don't try to distribute is that a lot of my beer is too expensive to send, it's, it's, yeah, send yeah, to yeah. a distributor. Yeah. I, you know, I can make money on it as long as I sell it in the, you know, my tasting room. That's that's cool though. That's cool to be able to to have a product that. Is is made with such quality ingredients that like you no know, you can't ship it all over the place but if right. you come there and drink it like you get that experience like a lot of people who who do vanilla and beers and do real vanilla beans they'll just throw it in a firkin and it's just a, you know a little bit but to have the that commitment to to buy that uh, enough vanilla beans to actually brew like a full batch of beer that's yeah and I and I've actually talked to a uh, Reading Distilling Guild about uh, he, right now he doesn't use any wood barrels but he's get, gonna start getting into them. And when he does, you know, I'm first on his list to get a barrel. Oh, nice. that's awesome! Oh, that's that's music to my ears. So we got we, we'll have a collaboration going on oh. there, and uh, I'm actually selling his products. And uh, just started last month selling some uh, mixed drinks 
for those who don't drink beer. You know, yeah. You yeah. know what? I'm Who'd a beer thought, drinker, and I've started ordering cocktails same. at breweries. Oh, yeah. We went to Boniface a couple weeks ago. They do a Monday night um, music bingo thing now, um, and it starts at 6 o'clock, so I can still be home and in bed by my <laughs> bedtime, which is awesome. <laughs> but last time, I didn't even have beer there. I ordered one of their cocktails, yeah. and I felt so fancy, yeah. and it was really tasty. Last time I right. was in Reading, uh, a friend of mine wanted to go to Shaler, so we went, and I had m- more liquor than beer. Wait, they have cocktails there, too? You have to get the orange cream sickle. Well, we're recording there soon. Get an orange cream sickle. Okay. Uh, so, what kind of of cocktails do yes, you have? Tell me on about the menu? these cocktails. Uh, they're they're just pretty basic. You know, I have gin, rum, spice rum, and uh, vodka. And right. uh, Red, Reading Distilling Guild makes all those except for the gin. Nice. Where do you get the gin from? Uh, it's made by Faber because uh, as a brewery, everything has to be manufactured in Pennsylvania. Right. Right. But we have a uh, you know we have a uh, cranberry. Soda tonic, of course, yeah, all the Coke, the, diet Coke, that that yeah, type of thing, the, the standard mix. The standards, right. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Right, no, that's it, that's great. I, I I know plenty of people who would go to a brewery with me, but wouldn't drink the beer. They don't like yeah. beer, right? But they will drink other stuff. That's that's great that everyone can go there and enjoy it all together. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's why I also carry wine, mm. uh, mm-hmm. yeah. and, along with a cider. Mm-hmm. So now I've got a, you know everything. I you know we're a little slow when it comes to embracing some of those changes. But once we do it, you know, we, we think it through and we, you know, follow it through and then it works. Yeah. There's, awesome. I, I think uh, some, there's a lot of breweries that serve uh, liquor and, and wine just because they kind of have to. Um, but it's cool. It's cool uh, to go to a brewery that actually like like um, La Cabra mm-hmm. has some really cool like yeah. cocktails and stuff. available. Yeah. I went to a brewery. This reminds me uh, with a bunch of, of people from work. Um, after our Christmas party in Philly, and I won't name the name of the brewery, but uh, there's a bunch of people there who didn't drink beer, and they went up to the bar and tried to order these cocktails. I didn't even know what they were, and the bartender's like, I don't even know how to make that. This is a <laughs> drink beer. <laughs> yeah. You know, last uh, last Friday night, I you know, no, normally I'm not in on Friday nights, but uh, I just happened to be in, and there were two guys, and, I, and I've known them since the brewery's been in existence. Uh, they always come in by themselves, and they sit there, and they'll stay there for two hours. Well, their wives are down at Wine Down, <laughs> <laughs> and he's going. You know, they're down there spending all the. I mean, some expensive money on drinking. You know, various mm-hmm. whiskeys and wine. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know, the other, last Friday night, his, their wives were there because oh. now we've got mixed drinks and. And they're sitting there drinking mixed drinks, so they're having they're having a good time. Both of them came up and thanked me. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's cool. yeah, for anyone that's not from our area, uh, West Reading has a really hopping um, scene on Penn yeah. Avenue. And uh, there's tons of bars. Um, one of our favorite beer bars, the Barley Mo, is there, which we love those guys. Um, of course, Broken Chair is there. Chatty Monks is there. Lots of really great restaurants. Sly um, Fox is going to be at, is, are they open yet at the end? Oh, yeah. Sort of yeah, the yeah end not yet, the but they're going to be yeah. in the VF complex. Yeah. So, it, you know, for locals, it's a really awesome place to go. And our buddy Josh Andrew, formerly from Liberty, is opening a new concept sort of beer place, which is going to be really cool. Wow. Should be opening soon, which we're looking forward to checking out. But, you know, so it's kind of like if you're going to stay local and go out, most people go to West Reading. It's what's really cool is there are so many places that you know you can it's kind of hop down the blocks <laughs> and and go to a bunch of different places and go beer hopping just in 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 a couple blocks. So um, it's really smart, I think, of Broken Chair. You guys are in the 400 block of right. um, Penn Avenue in a really unique building. It was uh, Garris Tile that was yes. there um, before you guys opened in November 2017. But how has um, uh, West Reading, the community, and and more, maybe more specifically um, Penn Avenue and the different restaurants, how has that community welcomed you uh, into the businesses? Uh, yeah, everyone down there is, uh, you know, very inviting, very open arms. Because, um, you know, the big thing was we didn't serve any food. Mm-hmm. So we weren't stepping on anybody's toes with that. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, we had people come in on the weekends looking for places to eat. And we allow you to bring anything in you want. I mean, if you bring a peanut butter and jelly sandwich from home, that's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and some people have brought hot dogs. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, there's a, there's a couple of uh, 
older patrons that come in, they bring casseroles in on Saturday. <laughs> nice. I love it. That's Casserole awesome. Casserole Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, this <laughs> that is, should be a thing. It should. Bring it in. You could share it. Have like a buffet of casseroles. And I mean, this stuff looks really good. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, oh, man. But, uh, you know, so we've had anything from donuts, sushi, you name it, from around the local area. So, no, everyone's been very uh, welcoming. I love what's the us. pizza place right across the street from you guys? That's GNA. GNA. That's where usually when we when oh. Rich and I come in for trivia, we'll get pizza from GNA and bring it over. And now there's another place that just opened. Uh, it's down the block and to the right. And um, Tony, uh, mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact name of his restaurant, but it's Tony's uh, Salator or something. You know, but uh, very you know very nice food, good food cool. in there as well. So. Did I see that someone is delivering to your brewery now? Did That's I see you Tony. guys post that? Is ah, it Tony's? There you go. That's Tony. Tony's yeah. Al Taglio. There you go. I'm oh, not Al Taglio. That means Al-Taglio. by the slice. Yeah. Oh, is that what that means? Yeah. Oh, look at you being all fancy. <laughs> You being all fans. So that's so cool. So if you don't want to walk across the street to GNA, have right. Tony <laughs> deliver to you. <laughs> that's true. And doesn't well, Nona Alba's sometimes deliver? Do they deliver down to you guys? Not to us. So they'll, they'll go you down got the Tony's bar. on your yeah. side, and Nona Alba's is up on the other side of Pennsylvania. Right. Let's not forget There's, the Wendy's that's there too. Come on now. <laughs> and Tony will also deliver, I believe, to the Barley Mo. Very cool. Oh, cool. Yep. It's such a great scene. I I love the area and all of the just the the love and the support for small businesses in in our community is is yeah. is really exciting. And to be honest, uh, Penn Ave as a whole, as somebody who grew up here, left and periodically comes back, it's cool to see the evolution of it instead of just knowing that they're going to do it. It's like no, this came through, then that came through, and now it is. Yeah, one of the better parts of Berks County, and, without any doubt. And I just got uh, the West Reading newsletter this morning that the kiosk are in for the uh, where the strip mall is mm-hmm. is at. Uh, I believe there's a hundred, hundred fifty spots that are now going to be uh, paid parking. So anyone can park. So there anyone now. can oh, park wow. there. Wow, cool. And cool. Uh, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> anyone can park there that unless you want to try to get in trouble. Like <laughs> yes, <do> sometimes yeah. <laughs> they won't notice. <laughs> But there's kiosks. It's, you know, you uh, you park in a numbered spot and then you put your money in a slot. Oh, that's nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Uh, so uh, b- before you came tonight, I was going back and I was rereading the article I had originally written when you guys first opened um, to kind of refresh my memory. And I c- completely forgot about the tile place. But right. I mentioned in the article about the tile floor. And I have to be honest, I don't think of all the times I've been in your brewery dozens of times, I don't think I've ever actually taken the time to look at the tile floor. But that was original or the tiles were original to the place that, that was, was there before? That was all original. Um, I, you know, the landlord and contractor wanted me to rip it out. Uh, we didn't know we had the brick walls. Yeah, behind the stucco. Behind the stucco, mm-hmm. but once we found those, I mean, it just, you know, you look at the tile, it's maintenance free, and it's eclectic looking because it was all his sample areas, so it's, uh, oh. there's probably 20 different types of tile spread that's, out. That's through, cool. Yeah, it's really neat, uh, and I'm glad we kept it. And the brick almost looks like it was intentional, like that was the vibe and the look you guys were going for, and, and yeah. it was just sort of a happy accident, I guess. And that, and that brick had been there since 1920. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. They don't build them like they used to. This is no. true. That's true. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah, I think it's about three or four bricks thick, actually, too. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's it's a massive wall. Jeez. So I need to know, and I don't think we talked about it yet. I was dealing with some audio stuff. Um, where did the name Broken Chair come from? Because I've, I've, we've come across breweries that had broken in their name before, that the item itself was broken, and that led to it. Is that the case with Broken Chair? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I figured much. that's kind of yeah. how it would come into effect, but that's um, what happened. You know, I, uh, as a home brewer, I had, I had a, had a keyser in the, in the garage that had six taps on it and I was constantly turning them over. You know, basically I was like the, uh, the beer addict in the neighborhood. Everyone <laughs> came and got beer, you know, every weekend, but, uh, I was out of town, uh, visiting some friends back in Ohio and, um, my wife was going over to her friend's house, and she said, hey, can I fill up the, you know, all the growlers? I said, yeah, take it. I mean, we just give it away anyway. So and I know where she was going. They had a fire pit, and they had all these chairs that were sitting behind this shed. These things were, you know, pr- no one should have sat in them. <laughs> all right, I've seen them before, and I sit on the ground. <laughs> no one should have sat in these. 
<laughs> and I think uh, four of them went through chairs that night <laughs> around wow. a fire, but no one spilled their beer. <laughs> Perfect. So they're doing scorpions. I mean, they're just, you know, they're bent over, and, you know, but the beer's always in the air. <laughs> so that's where the name come from. That's awesome. Break the chair, save the beer. Yes, and actually, <laughs> and actually, the uh, one of the original chairs is in the uh, w- front window of the brewery. That's we, awesome. We had it painted with a hippie vibe. Right, right, right. It's, it's and it's broken. Like yes, yeah, it is yeah. broken. Yes. <laughs> nice. So don't try to sit in it. <laughs> don't try. Of course to sit not. In. You probably have to have a sign up. You know, health and safety, all of that. This chair is yes. not for sitting. Well, the story of the broken chair. You don't you have that in front oh, of the like chair? A, like a plaque. Isn't there like there a little w- it, frame it was thing? there, but now it's on the. Uh, I think it's on the front of the menu. Actually. Oh yeah. The, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. oh yeah. Yeah yeah. I was just looking at that. Why broken chair? You asked. Yeah. Yes. But also like. This chair is not for sitting. Here's <laughs> why. <Right. laughs> you know, then, uh, yeah, and I get a lot of comments. Well, the logo doesn't match the name. And, and you're absolutely right. But, uh, but the logo is cool. So. Mm. But we needed, right. a, we needed a logo. And uh, you know, I knew a local artist who does this type of thing. And he came out and he said, look, best way to do this is just tell me what you like. I said, all right. I like Game of Thrones. <laughs> I, like Day, I like Day of the Dead. Okay. Uh, and my wife is kind of a hippie. She likes hippie things. <laughs> and a guy, and the guy, you know, he went back. He come back two weeks later, and uh, he had nine different designs. That was the first one. We just looked at him. You don't have to go any further. That's it. Cool. It's very. We, cool. Made, we made a couple changes, but that was that was basically. I, I it. like that the logo isn't like a broken. Joke. Yeah, I yeah. think it's cool. Right. I like that it's different. Yeah. And you know what I just noticed, which I never noticed before. The peace signs in his eyes. Yeah, that's the hippie right. part. I know. Yeah. I literally never noticed that before. And on that particular uh, logo that you have, you notice that it's on a banner. Yeah. That's from Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. Ah. <laughs> nice. And I like the. I like that the so skull that, is a So mug. that's the Bray sigil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like the. Uh, um, there's a name for that kind of flag, and I can't think of what it is. That vertical like. A pentagon. Pentagon. <laughs> what? what? It's a pentagon. No, like that. That the type style of, of that type of flag that hangs vertically with the point know. at the I'm bottom. I'm just saying there's it's a, a pentagon, a, though. Wow, yeah. the heraldry. But uh, yeah, there and there's the crossed uh, like malts uh, with the hops on the end. And now I understand. Oh, they're weapons. Mm. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Really, you know. <laughs> yep. That's so so cool. I, cool. I have an important question. Um, my glass is empty. Yes. So, do I drink more of the coconut porter, or should we go on to we another beer before on. the game? Let's try another one. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's do that. I, I heard you brought a lager. I did bring a lager. Ooh, yes. let's Ooh. do a lager. You you know how to please us. <laughs> he is uh, he gets gold stars for uh, being a good guest because I asked, <laughs> what are we drinking on the show? And he basically said, what do you guys want to drink on the show? Yeah, nice. <laughs> I was like, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I, and, and, you know I'm, I'm glad I asked because... I actually had just made a um, a brand new brew, and it is uh, a New England IPA. <laughs> which, oh, yeah. uh, and it's also eight point eight percent. Oh, it's uh, it, it will make the masses happy. It, it is very aggressive oh, and bold. So <laughs> look at how that pours. Oh my God! Thank you. It's so pretty. This is called Ranga Crimson Lager. So I get the crimson part mm-hmm. because it's red. What is ranga? Orangutan. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> Again, you got to ask the master brewer who names the beers now. <laughs> this is Daniel's name. All right. So I you, you keep referring to him as Daniel. So I have to ask this. Yes. As a Dan. As um, a Dan. Does he prefer to go by Dan, but as the parent, you, you need to refer to him as Daniel? Because my mom... He's one of the yeah. only people that gets away with calling me Daniel. There are two kinds of people. My she mother, does call you Daniel. My all the mother time. and people I owe money are the only ones that get to call me Daniel. Is that the case for your son? Parents and debtors? No, no, okay. not at all. Um, most of the time, we call him Dan. Okay. Uh, if we want to get his attention, well, Daniel. Uh, but the the weird thing is, all through school, every coach he had called him Danny. Yeah, I've I've gotten that. Okay. Not at school, and but I've gotten Danny. He, Your grandfather's allowed to call you that. Of he course. absolutely hated that. <laughs> See, I'm okay with Danny. <laughs> Pop-up gets to call me that. Um, cousins on the other side have called me Danny. Uh, along, they still call me yeah. Danny to this I day. I called you Danny when we were younger. Yeah, but I mean, you're the only one that grew out of that. 
cousins. You don't call him Danny. No, cousins uh, on the oh, other side yeah, yeah, call yeah. me call me Danny oh. still. Would you like me to have a, ta- a cousin meeting? No, it's okay. Cousin meeting. It's okay. <laughs> it's not as bad as Wayney. Oh, that's true. Or Steffi. Steffi's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> true. I'll take we Danny. We got the short stick. <laughs> Danny's actually kind of cool makes relative sense. To, to the... Yeah, like yeah, Danny Zuko. Danny DeVito. Yeah. But mm. not, not Danny Bonaduce. There's no yeah. cool Steffies. Oh, actually, there is a, a woman who is a restaurateur in Boston who owns one of the best restaurants, Stephanie's on Newberry, and she has two spinoff restaurants that are both called Steffies. Oh, that's cool. But it's called... It's print, it's spelled with an I at the end, so it's kind of like... Is hip. it PH or FF? It is PH. Okay. Only PH. Seriously, there's no yes. Fs in my name. <laughs> what's, what's the PH level of your name? Hmm. Uh, get the F's out of here. We, we probably Bop. should have uh, had the lager first because <laughs> I, I keep tasting coconut stout. <laughs> Give that man a glass of water. Yeah, Give that yeah. man a glass, of water. a glass of water. <laughs> I took a nice chug of water first. But this should be very caramel forward. Oh, it is. Cow, it yes. is. And that was the goal. I, you know, I Again, I like the red, brown, and stouts. Mm. And I wanted a I wanted a caramel mm. lager, basically. I love that we're at home and I can hit nearby venues on Untapped, and, and bro, the chair comes up. It's awesome. <laughs> nice. It's awesome. Nice. This is my kind of beer. I like uh, that that sort of malty. Like it's almost like very uh, English esque mm-hmm. mm-hmm. in this in style. It's really nice. And I do do sell a lot of this. I would yeah, imagine. I imagine, especially in this area. I, this this kind of lager. Is going to sell well because we all grew up with Yingling and they've been around forever. And this, I feel like, would be the lager that transitions Yingling drinkers into more craft beer. Right. Now, I do have a very light... Yingling is craft beer. Well, I know it is. That's why I said more (laughs) craft. (laughs) I do have a very, very light lager. Mm -hmm. Uh, It measures 3.3. Whoa. Wow. Um, I approve. So that's when the the guys come in that want a Miller Light, And I go, well, it's not exactly a Miller Light. It's got a little more flavor. Um, you know, so that's what, what they get. Ooh, next time I go tailgating for a Phillies game or something, I'm going to make sure I come down and get a crowler of that, then I'm going to go. Well, All you're right. going to have to get a growler and growler. somebody gets a crowler yep. machine. Well, I'll get a growler. Yeah. I'll get a growler. I apologize. You can borrow my hydro R- flask wrong and then it'll stay cold. And then yes. it will stay cold. Duh. Now, I, <laughs> Words know, are hard. We are going to the Craft Brewers Conference next week, and one of the, uh, we got several... Uh, things we want to look at. One of those is everyone who makes a crowler machine will be there. Of course oh, yeah. they will. That's there. Yeah. That's yeah. Everyone who makes a crowler machine will yeah. be there. And the can manufacturers will mm-hmm. be there. Now, do you think you will look at cans while you're there? That came out fucking wrong. <laughs> 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 lots and lots of them, actually. <laughs> So if you're going to look at the, the the crowlers, if all the crowler manufacturers are going to be there and the, the can manufacturers... Are you going to look at cans? Is that something that you see in your future? I know with a a two-barrel system, it's kind of tough to think about that, but do you see that down the road? Um, Maybe with crowlers actually canning, uh, no. But uh, I'll tell you, you the the guy who does my taps, uh, Tap Pro, he just bought a mobile canning system. Mm. And he wants to get going, and he said, look, I'll can anything you want, any volume you want. You That's know, cool. So I'm kind of like, you know, the guinea pig, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, we've got a good relationship. So good, it's like little on-site sales of four packs or something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be really cool. I would buy a four pack of this lager. I'll tell you. I that. know. <laughs> I really this is like, like this. the best <laughs> trivia beer. Just keep wow! Wow! Give me this. Could beer you all night. have been any more direct with that? It's the best trivia beer. You need a beer <laughs> like this when you're doing trivia. I thought you were trying to be like, "Hey, let's play the game." Now, now this is no, because little... I, I go to his brewery okay. to play trivia, right, which I right. haven't been there in a couple months. Now, this and I is need also a little sneaky too. I mean, it's five point two five. Hmm. So, mm. yeah, yeah, it's a liar that I would put it at five point two five. That's session sessionish ish. Ish. Yeah. Session ishable. Don't don't tell Lou. <laughs> session is what you make it that's true 13 percent, five percent it's fine yeah 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 any pizza is a personal pan pizza if you believe <laughs> <laughs> i've believed in many of them <laughs> mm. this is stellar this is phenomenal but should we uh start playing a game 
Should we should we find out who? Yeah, because I don't. I want to be able to enjoy this for a bit. All right, well, well, I'm gonna pour some more of it because <laughs> yeah, right. How do you get that? <laughs> Wayne, can you uh, top off my, uh, my yeah? My glass I then? got it to take pictures for so. I mean, I oh, did a really cool. Oh, I did on. it for the social media guys. <laughs> Look at the Instagram story <laughs> I just posted. Oh. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right, all right. Does it need sound? Because I don't want to. No, turn it's, sound it's a on. boomerang. But oh. it has a really cool guy doing a big karate chop kick. Where's your glass, Dan? Over here. Sorry. See it now. It does have a karate kick guy. Show them. Oh, I'm very proud of it. Yeah, I can't be bothered to actually open Instagram on my phone. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> See, nice. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Well, Dan since approves. we since we all have uh, uh, oh, I kind of uh, do this on my phone. varying oh, levels of, of of poured glasses of beer, I feel like it is time is to find out time? who will end up being the first one that oh, is punished. Shiza. Cheers, Internet, and welcome to Happy Fun Times Games. That a, might not be too happy today. Yeah, podcast <laughs> trivia segment that is no longer a benevolent god. Nice. Today, we are playing a game that we've played a few times before, and I don't think I've officially named it before, but today I've come up with a name, and I'm calling it Bottom of the Barrel on Beer Advocate. Also, I think Beer Advocate should sponsor this segment. Really Checks good. made payable too. Brought to you by, not yet, but maybe in the future. Probably so not. I have again mined the deepest recesses of the darkest corner of beeradvocate.com, wherein lurk the lowest rated beers on that site. And I've returned with nuggets of wisdom from users who take themselves so seriously, they actually write reviews of beers that have no business being earnestly rated. These are the worst rated <sighs> beers on Beer Advocate. In this game, I will read you an excerpt of some reviews of these beers. Did you just pronounce the P in excerpt? Excerpt. Excerpt. <laughs> excerpt. Okay. An extract from these reviews uh, with some words or phrases missing, and I will give you multiple choice options as to what those words or phrases are. I've also decided to include at the beginning of each section uh, my favorite quote from the reviews for that beer, just kind of give us a little extra added flavor. Hey, see what I did there. Also, for the first time ever, oh, there has never been a prize for winning Happy Fun Time Games. And there never should be. Just bragging rights. <laughs> and barely that. Is there a prize? There is not. Okay. But there is a punishment. But there is the for punishment, losing. yeah. So I have a can. Are we going to say Sealed what it in is? a bag. Nope. Not okay, until good. we decide, decide who the loser is. All right, is. good. And uh, the loser of today's game will have to partake of said beverage. You don't have to drink the whole thing, obviously. Just a little bit. Uh, and we're going to do that in Last Call. Is yes. how we're doing this? Yes. Uh, so if you want to hear that, and we're probably going to do like maybe shoot a little video of it or something, maybe put that on Patreon. So I don't like that Dan's in on this and knows all about it. He does. He I mean, does. I, it's, still, it's still a trivia game. I don't yeah. know the answers. He doesn't. He knows the punishment. Uh, this was all Dan's idea. I think it's a brilliant idea, and I want to keep doing this in the future. And uh, we want to keep putting this stuff on Patreon. So if you want to get in on that action and see uh, the punishment in action, uh, go to patreon.com slash beerbusters. But without further ado, we will begin with Camo High Gravity Lager by Camo Brewing Company. An 8.5% malt liquor with an average score of 1.88 out of 5 on Beer Advocate, oh putting it squarely in the category of awful. My favorite quote from the reviews on this one is uh, a pretty poetic take on the uh, effects of the beverage, so allow me to indulge for a moment. <laughs> a drum beats in the brain, and it becomes a circle. A ring of tom-toms pounding a monotonous rhythm designed not for liberating the soul in joyous celebration, but only physical punishment. How appropriate. The mallets meet the membrane in this orgy of sadism. What? Yes, that was taken uh, from a review by the user Thelonious Monk, posted way back, <laughs> way back in 2005. Wow. Whoa. Anyway, now on with the questions. Todd's going to guess first on this one, and our first review reads, The aroma is a cross between wet cardboard and three-day-old garbage or three-week-old roadkill. I'm going with roadkill. Going with the roadkill, Dan. I'm going to go with garbage. Oh, Dan going with garbage. 
Steph. I'm thinking garbage, too. Oh, Steph's thinking garbage, and you are correct. It is three-day-old garbage. Oh, no. This is stressful. <laughs> yeah, another good start. There's something on the line oh, no. now. Where is it going to be if the first punishment <laughs> is our guest? That's oh. uh, going to be pretty awesome. The review goes on to say, <laughs> this is by far the worst beer I have ever rated. Moving not, on. Not had, but rated. But rated, yes. Why? You're, the whole point of this is I don't understand why people are writing reviews of these beers to begin with. Good Moving point. on. For, the, for you. Yeah, for, yeah, for you me, to find it. Well, like maybe one right day here. some podcaster will read <laughs> yeah. this on their podcast. Our next review, also for Camo, uh, contains this gem. <laughs> this must have been a truly terrible beer. Smelled like someone spilled corn syrup into a bedpan or an ashtray. Ooh. Uh, ashtray. Dan is saying ashtray, Seth. Corn syrup. I'll say bedpan. Steph saying bedpan and Todd. I'm going to go ashtray. Going to go ashtray. Todd and Dan are correct. Oh, oh. It is, in fact, ashtray. Uh, the reviewer added that it tasted like some... Por- that, excuse me. Tasted like someone poured the contents of that ashtray into a glass and served it to me. Moving on. And we move to a new beer. Oh, God. This is Magnum. This is not fun. From Miller Brewing. No, am I happy? It is. It's more fun. This it's is more miserable, fun. I can stressful feel the tension. time games. I, I will say, I, I, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna put this out there right now. I will also partake of the punishment because I can't lose, and I just want to do it. So <laughs> I, I kind of want to, too. In Have so- I ever checked it in? In solidarity, probably. Uh, this is Magnum <laughs> from Miller Brewing Company, a 5.6%. Wait, what is the beer? Magnum. Magnum. Magnum, as in P.I. or condoms. 5.6%, another malt liquor. This one has an average score of 2 out of 5, oh. which takes it out of awful and puts it into poor. <laughs> My favorite quote is, you have to have some really angry metal on to try and complement this harshness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Moving on to our first review, Steph's going to guess first on this one, and this review states, the aroma is disgusting, like dirty ditch water that had dead mice floating in it, or drunken college kids had vomited vomited into it. Oh my god. I'll do the first one. The The mice or rat or whatever. Dead mice or college kid vomit. Todd, what do you think? Uh, I won't go college kids. All right, going with the vomit and being the college hand. kid at one time. I remember <laughs> drinking malt liquor, yeah. <laughs> vomiting into a ditch. Yes. Yeah, I think I'm going to say dead mice. Oh, Dan, going with dead mice. My fellow beer busters are correct. <gasps> it is dead mice floating in it. The full quote is: "The aroma is disgusting, like dirty ditch water that had dead mice floating in it in the sun for three weeks or so." Bad. You don't say. You don't say. Moving wow. on to our second review for Magnum, and we're oh, I'm going to go and be your advocate and see what people rated this Magnum <laughs> beer. Seriously, no one's doing that. No one is doing that. I'm doing it. Todd is going to guess first on this one. Our next reviewer has this particular gripe: the mouthfeel is the main problem. It's a that's the main problem. Like old motor oil, or B, slick and spit like. I'm going, I'm going with mo- motor oil. Going with motor oil, Dan. Uh, slick and spit-like. Oh, Dan going with slick spit. Steph. <laughs> <That's> so bad. <laughs> I'll do the spit one, too. Do the spit one, too. You are correct. It oh is slick God. and oh, no. spit-like. I mm. missed three. They follow up with, thanks a bundle, Miller. Thanks for making spit beer. I loved you. And this is what you give me? They, yeah. were, they were very, yeah. very... That was very poetic. Heartbroken. Just to review the scores real quick. <laughs> Todd has one point. Oh, no! Dan has four points. Steph has three points. There are two questions remaining. Dan has already won. Oh, yes. shit. Dan can't lose. Oh, Oh. So this is between Todd and Steph. I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted to be the one that gets punished. I feel well, like we're all going to do it anyway. <laughs> let's be honest. Probably. Um, so I, I think at this point, I'm going to reveal the punishment just to turn up. Okay. Yeah. Turn that's up good, the that's pressure. Good point. That's a good point. So this is something that comes out of Dan and my uh, beer fridge at home. <laughs> something we forgot about. Something we, we, we uh, stuck in a back corner. I'm trying to open it under the table so nobody sees it before the big reveal. Um, and forgot about 
You remember uh, when Stone did the Enjoy By series? Oh, God. With their fresh IPA that was supposed yeah. to be enjoyed by a certain date. They did one 4th of July. They also did one for Christmas in 2017. This is Stone Enjoy By Christmas. Oh. 12 25 <laughs> 2017. Ew. Wow. I yes. probably have never checked that in, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, the loser has to drink from this can. Awesome. Yes. Why don't we get a picture of it real quick? With you. For the patrons. <laughs> for the big reveal. <laughs> Steph has her phone out. But you got to do the label out. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. Oh, and your your, your pop filter Wait, matches turn the it can. this way just a little more. Yeah, so you can see the 17. Nice. 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 So that's There's what we're playing, nice we're playing for. That's what we're playing for. Joyously <laughs> fresh, it says right on the label. Moving on, I even forgot who's going first now. I think we are uh, actually at Dan, right? Mm, yeah, yes. we are. Yeah, we yeah. are at Dan. Um, so you've got nothing to lose, so sit back, relax, and answer <laughs> this question <laughs> about O'Doul's. Oh. Yeah, by Anheuser Busch. A 0.5% low alcohol beer. Oh, pop up, drink this. Yeah, this one has a score of two out of five, also putting it in the poor category. It has a two out of a five. Two out of five. Wow. That's way higher than I would have thought. Uh, feature quote for this one. Why would you drink this ever? <laughs> if you need a drink, have some water. All right, Dan. We begin simply with... But water rests your pipes. <laughs> the taste is of blank, except thinner. Is it stale Cheerios marinated in old bath water? Oh, God. Or rotten ramen noodle broth? Uh, oh, God. Uh, Cheerios. Dan going no, with Cheerios. ramen noodle broth. Steph saying 100%. 100% ramen noodle broth, Todd. Ramen noodle. Oh, saying ramen noodle broth. Dan was the only one who's correct. Oh! Nothing changes. Oh, my God. Uh, well. Uh-oh. Yeah. We have our loser. At least it's not me. It's not awesome. you. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Todd took one for the team here. I'm going to throw out that I've been trying to get them all wrong, so I, I would be the one to do it. You've you. literally gotten everyone correct. You cannot lose what these the games. F- <laughs> you are physically <laughs> incapable. Dan always wins. It's like it's like wow. a time travel paradox where you just you have to fulfill your destiny. I guess so. And your destiny is to so win happy fun time. Your destiny. Uh, so even though we know what's going to happen, we are contractually obligated to finish the game, and we have one more review for O'Doul's, and Steph is going to guess. First on this one, our Yay. final reviewer ruminates on the taste, saying, It seems sometimes non-existent, but sometimes like some strange watery cheese or some mutant strain of sugar. Oh. I thought that was the whole review. Those were the options. Yeah. Cheese or sugar? Watery cheese or mutant sugar. I was going to say, I kind of missed it too. Uh, I'll go cheese. I don't know. <laughs> Steph going Whatever. cheese. I give up. <laughs> doesn't care anymore. Todd, what do you think? Could at least get another point. Could have more than one. I'm going sugar. All right, going with the sugar. And finally, Dan. It's watery cheese or what sugar? Mutant strain of sugar. Mutant strain of sugar. Yes. Uh, watery cheese. Oh, Todd was right on that one. Hey, yeah, hey Todd. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a late, yeah. a late, so a winner excited. loser. Yeah. <laughs> a late in the game victory there. Yeah. Um, the reviewer also goes on to ask, and where the hell are the hops? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Drunk McDermott, where the hell are the hops? <laughs> Indeed. So we'll add up the points real quick here to make it official. And uh, so with five out of six correct. At the tippity top is Dan. Hey. Hey. Coming in second place with three, a uh, respectable 50% success rate, is Steph and sitting ruefully at the bottom. <laughs> Unfortunately, is Todd with two points. After he was so nice enough to bring us these delicious beers. I know, we I know. We repay him by that. Well, after... after I drink this one. I got, I got another one to wash my mouth out with. <laughs> Thanks, That's, good right? yeah. That's, That's a good way to look at <laughs> it. That is a very good point. <laughs> this is, of course, the part of the podcast where we shout out to our most generous patrons on Patreon, people without whom we seriously we couldn't keep doing this without you, and we appreciate you so much. We've got some new patrons to thank, and we're going to start with them. Our first new patron is Mark Modugno. Oh, no, I hit help and not back. Thank you so much. Another new patron, <laughs> Topher Simmons. I'll tap that. Another new patron, 
Poor Man's Brewing Company. Hey! Cool. Hey, yo! Shout out from our last episode, probably just so they could listen to their own episode of Last Call, but hey, we'll take it. We still love them. We love them. And, of course, perpetual favorites, James Lamberg. Delilah. <laughs> Joe Mansell. It's drugs. Kathy Obachevsky. Hey! Come on, baby, make it hurt so and good. Special, special apologies to Kathy that I said your name wrong the last two or three Did episodes. Did you see her messages? Yeah. She, She's she, the best. She corrected me. Um, sorry because of the weird time warp of podcasting. It took a while to get it right. Yes, but i we love pretty you, sure I said your name right. If not, just tell me again. <laughs> Eric Dixon. Tofurky. Nate Fockman. Yes. If you're not a lank, you're a wank. Brian Mills. He's got a hair at Dunn. L- Wolfgang Von Colt. No, I'm going to toast your ass. Jen McDonald. <laughs> this is bullshit. Marilyn Engelman. Sprinter Dan. Josh Price. I want to chew on an almond right now. Ron McDonald. <laughs> and Victoria Miles. Oh, my God. If you want to find out how you can get on this list and other behind-the-scenes per- perks. Or purse. Or purses. Uh, we Maybe we'll give you purses. We <laughs> I got some yet. old purses. <laughs> yeah, we can do some branded purses. <laughs> yeah. uh, go to patreon.com slash beerbusters. You get to access the last call, and you'll get to see... And here, our very first Happy Fun Time Games punishment. I already isn't, posted the picture of isn't you. Isn't that exciting? It only took us 165 episodes? 165. Yeah, yeah. What do we do now, Dan? One, we, we, I'm so five. fortunate to be... <laughs> yeah, right. <here. laughs> awesome. <laughs> Somebody had to be first. That is very true. Uh, Let, let's pay for this, both with yes, money and our souls. We got to settle up. Say, Yvonne, uh, remember when I said I'd have to send away to NASA to calculate your bar tab? <laughs> oh, yeah. We all had a good laugh, Mo. The results came back today. <clears throat> you owe me seventy billion dollars. Saluton. That's how you say hello in Esperanto. Esperanto, very obscure language. Not many people know of. It was a failed experiment to be a universal language. You're a filthy patak. <laughs> Not Klingon. If you want to learn a new language, to really show us how much better you are. Rosetta Stone. That got mean. That got real mean. <laughs> Rosetta Stone is where you need to go. Either either you're better than us or you want to help uh, help pay it forward a little bit. Rosetta Stone has continuously set the standard in Or learning. you want to communicate with more of the human race. Yeah, that sounds way better than what I said. Rosetta Stone has continually set the standard in language learning to enable people to change their world. They have a, an innovative, technology-driven language learning solution that is used by thousands of schools, businesses, and government organizations, and just millions of average Joes around the world. They've got courses in 30 languages, whether you want to do Spanish, Mandarin, English, or a less prominent one like Swahili, Swedish, or Tagalog. 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 Tag- Tagalog? Tag- Maybe it's Tagalog. Tagalog. That sounds better than Tagalog. You know it's what? like playing R- tag with log. And if you want to start your language learning journey today, you want to head to rosettapodcast.com slash beerbusters because they are offering listeners of Beerbusters a 24-month subscription for less than $8 a month. rosettapodcast.com slash beerbusters. Learn a new language today. No, 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 Know your beers. Hey, Steph, what do you got? Know your hops. Yeah. Part four. Three. Three? Oh, shit. <laughs> One, two, five. Three, sir. Three. She's like a movie studio. She's like already thinking about the next installment of the franchise. Oh, gonna my beat God. beat this till it's well, dead. Well, we record two at once. That's how it works now, right? Isn't that what they do in the movie industry? They just film two film movies two at once. once. For yeah. some of them, yeah. We tried the, three. the two in a row thing this before. This is 12 years in the making. Shit. This is a, a, a studio making franchise. The trilogy. Part three. So let's talk about three new hops today. Uh, let's talk about some of the OGs, uh, OG American hops today. First, Amarillo, or Amarillo, if you're talking about the uh, Spanish color. Uh, Amarillo is fruity and unmistakable. Um, it is an American original when it comes to hops. The origin, of course, is Washington. Um, it originated in 1998. Uh, it's used with respectable alpha acid content it can be a dual purpose hop and contribute to bittering additions with its unique high sought after aromas and flavors combined with high demand it's most often seen in late kettle or whirlpool additions and as a dry hop Um, it has become a fixture in american pale ales ipas and imperial ipas Uh, aroma and flavor there's going to be diverse aroma depending on um, picking time early harvest brings aromas of lemon and candy and mid harvest brings aromas of grapefruit floral and tropical late harvest can often be onion garlicky and dank 
Uh, alpha range is 8 to 11 8 to 11 percent and beta is 6 to 7 percent next azaka named for the haitian god of agriculture i had no clue wow really? uh, it boasts an intense <laughs> tropical fruit profile uh, again the origin is in washington it was formerly known as number 483 from the american dwarf hop association and uh the use is it's excellent for aroma qualities it's kind of a go-to hop for late and dry hop additions in a variety of styles uh, it is a favorite for IPAs. Uh, it has intense and tropical aromas and flavors, uh, su- sustained impressions of citrus and very ripe mango with notes of or- orchard fruits like pears and apples and pine needles throughout. Alpha is 14 to 16%, beta 4 to 5.5%. And finally, my OG favorite hop. It's not my favorite anymore, but it was my original and a hop I actually used to grow. Cascade. It is a classic. Uh, really no other hop has done what Cascade has done, at least for American craft beer. Its origin is Oregon. It is the granddaddy of American craft brewing hops. Cascade was bred in 1956, people, wow. through a USDA whoa, program whoa. and was first released in 1972. Its ancestry includes English Fuggle and Russian Sarah Brianka. I think that's how you say it. Mm. I tried. Uh, Usage, uh, the classic, it is a classic finishing hop for countless craft ales. Um, It has an unmistakable character uh, that's right at home. Pale ales, blondes, wheats, IPAs, stouts, porters, pretty much any American craft beer style, you can put this hop into it. Aroma and flavor, uh, it is famous for its citrus-like, particularly that ruby red grapefruit uh, aroma and flavor with uh, prominent floral tones. Alpha 4.5. 5 to 7% and beta 4.8 to 7%. So if you didn't know, now you know. Haitian gods. Hops rule. So is there going to be like a, a, a like a hops uh, Avengers Endgame sort of <laughs> like know your beer where all the hops you've talked about come together and like save the galaxy or something? We can make that happen. Save the galaxy Well, hop. first I have to snap my fingers and half of them will disappear. Oh, geez. Right? <laughs> Yes. We got a giggle from the audience. <laughs> Rich likes that. <laughs> <laughs> but which half would you get rid of? Oh, I know for sure. Which ones? I'm not going to say now. Oh, I would come give on. Away, I would give it away. <sighs> I would give it away, give, give it, it away, away give it away now. Oh, jeez. And perfectly, I think we have a hoppy beer to drink next. I think so we do. Hit the button. We do. Ooh, buttons. Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! Round two, fight. Beer. Okay. So what are we drinking? Am I being punished first? No, oh, that's, that's that's in last call. That's last, last call. call. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Am I being punished yet? Oh. <laughs> I feel All so right. guilty. Here you are the one being punished. <laughs> Todd's never I really back. tried to get them wrong. I was like, ooh, what makes the least sense? Oh, shut up. All right. Th- you always this, win. This beer is called Jolly Gnome. Ooh. It is a blueberry IPA ooh. milkshake. What? Trivia question. Do you know what country the gnome originated from? Ireland? No. Botswana? No. Russia? This is your chance. You could get 100 points and not be the loser. Denmark? Nope. (sighs) Czechoslovakia? Nope. Sweden? Nope. Australia? Nope. Holland? Nope. England? Nope. Germany? Yes. Wow. Huh. Now you know. Look who got 100 more points. (laughs) The 100 (laughs) points were not offered to you. They were only (laughs) offered to talk. (laughs) We guessed it, but we put down the Netherlands. So we didn't get the point last night. I think I've had this before. Oh my god! Look at that. It's pretty. It looks like a, a what, blueberry. It mm-hmm. is blueberry. Yep. Yes. Blueberry milkshake IPA. Yep. Wayne, I thought you said blueberry for a second. Blueberry. I'm sure there is a blueberry milkshake IPA out there in the world as well. Use the Google. And so, do you remember um, about a year? S- was that this past Thanksgiving that we went for the Fruity Pebbles beer, or was that the Thanksgiving before? So, around the time when Broken Chair opened, uh, Bolero Snort was brewed the Fruity Pebbles IPA. Oh, yeah. And Rich and I, on thanks- the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, well, I literally called every freaking beer distributor in Jersey, because that was the day they were distributing it to a lot of South Jersey um, distributors, because it wasn't coming to Pennsylvania. Um, and I got a place to hold a f- four pack for me and we drove to some random place in Jersey to get this beer. Guess where it is right now? Mary six pack. Bum, bum, but <laughs> so what drove you to make a milkshake IPA? 
Uh, uh, he owns a business <laughs> yeah, and right, wants yeah. to make money. <laughs> you know, um, I like brewing with lactose. Okay. Okay. Um, especially with some stouts. Uh, if you, if you, a lot of people don't like stouts because of that burnt, mm-hmm. roasty flavor. So I make a couple that, uh, you know, the lactose covers that up. It gives it a, b- a better mouth feel, and that's what the ma- that's what it does for this. It gives it a mouth feel mm-hmm. that uh, is almost creamy in a way, and um, the blueberries in this, you know, you it's it's a unique tasting beer, um, and I you know, Ooh. and I cannot keep this on tap. Um, as soon as it's on, it's almost gone. Now the other beer, and I almost you know I. I, I was going to bring another one, but I thought it was probably too much. But I also have a uh, a very tart. It's ch- never too much. Cherry wheat. Right oh, now. Nice. That sounds and, nice. and that one's just like I can't 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 keep that going either. Mm. Oh, that sounds good. People love fruit in their beer. Yeah, that's and true. that's uh, you know I'm getting ready uh, right now. I've got an imperial uh, or a raspberry imperial stout. Ooh. Um, weighs in at nine point three. And that's another one I can't keep. So how do you add uh, the the fruit? Okay, all my fruit I get from uh, a place in Oregon, Oregon fruit. It's uh, it comes as a puree. They um, add everything back in except the seed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's no sugar added. Mm-hmm. There's nothing added to it. It gets just a slight hit heat treatment that keeps uh, microorganisms at bay. So, um, you know, I add this to the fermenters, and, uh, you know, it, it retains its fruit flavor. Yeah. It, it, it's just a high-quality product. And again, it's expensive, but um, and it's not a beer that I could probably, you know, distribute. But, mm-hmm. you know, as long as I sell it in the tap room, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good. It's so pretty. <laughs> it really is. It is a really That's really why we call I mean, it Jolly Gnome. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a really Aww. cool color. Charlie, no, I love it. I like that the the blueberry is not overpowering in it, but I like that the blueberry is a very fresh blueberry. Yeah, flavor. oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's not. Uh, and it's fresh and it's pronounced, but it doesn't. It, it's not in your face, mm-hmm. right? And, and, you know, and it's uh, it's still an IPA. You got some hops in there. I mean, yeah, you get it on the back end, but, I, uh, I, but it's not overbearing. I right. feel yeah. like the the blueberry actually plays pretty well. With the hop character, I mean, it has that 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 hazy New England juicy, you know, not really bitter hop hop character, and I think the blueberry. I don't know if I've ever had a blueberry milkshake IBA before, and um, and, and I did try another fruit at first. Mm-hmm. I tried I tried a, a blood orange, and um, mm. again. Um, Went down a drain. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, just, I feel like a lot more just people not work. do blood orange, where blueberry is right. more unique. It's something different right. that not everybody's doing. But, um, you know, I've got, like I said, i got a lot of fruit beers coming up. I gotta, I'm going to be making a tangerine cream ale. Mm. Um, that sounds nice. Mm-hmm. Wait, you got to tell them the name of your cream ale. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> that one is uh, Karma is a Bitch. Nice. <laughs> Karma's a bitch. Yeah. Karma certainly is. <laughs> yep. I love and it. Um, and you know that was the surprising beer. I made that, and it's just a stable now. It, really? You know, I, I, That's I just keep, a straight cream ale. It's not like it's a just a straight cream yeah. ale, and uh, people come in just. That's cool. Just to buy the cream ale. Mm-hmm. So Say, Karma is a bitch. And best served cold. <laughs> yeah, <you> go, yes. <laughs> so you guys have a lot of uh, sort of regular events that have been going on. Um, you would still do trivia. That's every right. other Thursday, right? That's the second and fourth Thursday of the month. So usually every other, but I guess sometimes there's a fifth one. Right. Um, and when we have a fifth Thursday, normally we uh, bring in live entertainment for that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I cool. saw you're doing a lot more live music. That's awesome. We are. Um and last night is probably the uh, biggest night on on the strip in West Reading for Thursday night, mm-hmm. and that's when we do um, vinyl night. Oh, oh cool! Yeah, oh vinyl, I love and vinyl. it's uh, I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, it's, uh, so how does that work? Do people bring their own records in? Um, the guy does it. 
Oh, you have a guy. We have a guy. You have comes a vinyl he's, guy. He's got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. He comes in, sets his turntables up because everything's digital now. Mm. So there's no not like hisses and you know skips and stuff like that. But uh, uh, he brings in um, a couple crates of rec- of vinyl. You can pick through that, or you can bring your own in. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I've I've brought my own in. You know, I I'll bring the Ramones in. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have I like the Sex Pistols, so I'll bring that. Yes. in. <laughs> I and, did uh, not know this side of you. I love this little uh, punk rocker here. Yeah, um, <laughs> and I you know and then I bring in Led Zeppelin. You know, Houses of the Holy. Oh man, yeah, yeah it just uh, so you know. And I was going through my vinyl the other night. I found a Judas Priest album. Wow, <laughs> yeah. nice. So nice. it's kind of like in the vault, you know. But uh, uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's an awesome night. People bring in and they come in and they just have a great time. We just rock all night. So do you play the record from front to back, or is it a limited no, selection? No, you um, you uh, pick a song. Okay, so you get one song off of it, or two. I mean, what whatever you well, want yeah. to play, and he'll put put it in a queue. Oh, that's cool. And then he'll play it. So if a, a, a record goes on that you're not too keen on, you know, I only got to survive a song or two, and then yeah. my my pick's coming up. Well, you know what? Um, I'm sitting there one night, and Mel Tillis <laughs> hit the airwaves. Wow. Not a big Mel fan, but, you know, still, you know, everyone loved it, and they rocked, and, mm-hmm. you know. That was followed up, I think, by a Queensryche song. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And that's one thing that's really cool about the guy that does trivia with you guys. He takes yes. music requests, too. He's sort of like a trivia DJ. Yeah. Trivia, oh, a trivia the, DJ. Yeah. A trivia DJ. J- nope. Don't. No. And don't trivia jockey. It. No, that, but you can write your requests yeah, and he'll good. play them throughout the night, and uh, it's a good time. So you look forward to playing trivia, yeah. but you also look forward to your songs being played. A TJ, yeah, that's that's party I masters. Was there. <laughs> party masters comes out and they they do all that. But uh, we're thinking maybe the fourth Thursday of a month. Now we're going to do a music bingo. What? Do it. They do it at St. Boniface, and it is so fun. And they do. And they, I would love if you and guys. And they're would do the it. same ones that would do it. Nice. He's he's oh, awesome. Cool. It's so much they are, fun. They are great people. Uh, Tom and Kim. Mm-hmm. They. I mean, they're really cool. Just take like all the like things that like breweries and places do like event wise that are like the standards that you you go out for, and just add music to all of them. Music, music trivia, is awesome. music bingo, yeah. music giant Jenga. I don't know <laughs> cornhole. They do that at breweries yeah, a lot. Mu- yeah, musical cornhole. <laughs> musical cornhole. Music, mu- musical drone races. So, <laughs> so vi- vinyl is the first uh, Thursday of the month. And then, uh, like I said, we're doing trivia the second and fourth. And then we either on the third Thursday of the month, we have um, live music. Uh, we've done open mic night. Oh, fun. So, um, you know, so we do some experimental things in there that uh, go along to now. Uh, starting in May, we got some Fridays booked for live entertainment after Trivia Thursdays. We're going to start doing some of that. Cool. That's awesome. That's So pretty much any Thursday that someone comes in, something's going to be going something's on. Something's going on. And Absolutely. you guys are open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday now, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Because sun- you weren't open Sundays before. That's we a, were, a newish thing. We were not. And uh, we were open 12 to 5. We just changed from 1 to 6. Mm. That's so hmm. Very cool. That's awesome. Well, if you've never been, it's a really cool spot. Um, and like I said before, West Reading is just a, a great place to go and hang out and spend your day and drink and eat. It and really walk. is. Yeah, it really is cool. There's so many great things that are over there. Now, if anyone wants to find Broken Chair online, where can they find you? Uh, we have a Facebook page, which where most of our communication comes from. Uh, we also have a website, brokenchairbrewery.com, which, will more, which directs you to the Facebook page. Okay. And we also have an Instagram account set all up. Right. So, you know, we're, we're involved in all that. Now, I d- but not a Twitter but not a Twitter now. No Twitter for you. And no, I, Twitter's just for yelling at people about politics these days. And I do have <laughs> I do a have fact. a social media guy that, that handles all that. Uh, it just look. I'm 58. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to be 58. That's man. fair, man. This like just, every time it gives you this shit. This stuff's yeah, just above my head anymore. You know, 
but like Dan, also like I don't care. I just want to make beer and sell it. And Dan's been 60 hours a week <laughs> brewing, so you know, yeah. he just uh but uh yeah, it, it, look, I'll give a shout. Matt Staber, Likeable Solutions. It's really done a great job cool. for me. That's really. awesome. Really. I like that name, Likeable Solutions. Likeable. That's Likeable clever. Solutions. That is yeah. a That's very clever. clever name. Before we wrap this up, I do want to give Holla Daily one more shout out. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm going to pass around their Riva Stout, I assume it's pronounced, R-I-V-A. Uh, it's a 6.5% uh, stout, and this one is made with dark roasted millet and chocolate roasted millet and buckwheat and roasted millet. Man, I didn't know you could do so much with this stuff. Um, and this is named after a dog who was named after a ski run, which was named after a battle where the 10th <laughs> Mountain Division braver, bravely took Riva or Riva Ridge in 1945. Uh, Riva, the, what was the ridge named after? mountain dog, <laughs> brings you a gluten-free beer as rich in history as its flavor. And look, the, there's like a log cabin and a little I like tree. like that artwork. And the dog, their That's cans so cool. are killer. And like, look, is that like a ski lift or something? Like this, their can art is super freaking cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's really uh, cool. I'm really hoping cool style, Rich yeah. and I, when we're on our road trip, one of our stops uh, this summer will be Denver, but we're going to, um, oh my God, what's the venue? We're going to Red see him. We're going to Red Rocks to see a show because I've always dreamed of seeing a show there. Um, and Golden isn't kind of far away. So I'm hoping that we can Do make it. it work that we can um, stop. Awesome. But if nothing else, I'm going to make sure I at least have their or their beer on tap somewhere when we're out there. But yes, So thank you it. again to Holla Daily for sending these great beers. We also have the IPA, which we'll probably crack open during last call. But, um, More than likely. Um, we're really enjoying these great beers. In addition to the Stone Enjoy by Christmas 2017. That would be uh, Which Todd can't wait well. for. Um, I also yeah. want to <laughs> shout out, we have some really awesome events coming up that we will be recording recording at which is super awesome we will be recording at little big beer fest but sorry guys it's sold out uh but you should definitely check Can't out get in harrisburg beer week um because they have tons of amazing events there's going always on. a lot of cool but stuff hey happening. if you wanted to go and you couldn't get a ticket the next be- best thing is to listen to our episode that's very that true it's just there. as good as I being mean, there well yeah well n- it's almost as good as being there <laughs> <laughs> it is. You're absolutely right. We always have a really, really good time. But some other awesome events that are coming up. Saturday, May 11th, we are doing another event with Hopheads, which we love them. We're doing the Hopheads Hangar Jam, um, which is going to be at the Capital City Airport in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, uh, which will be that day. We are going to get to interview some extreme athletes, which hey, will be pretty freaking awesome. That's different. Yeah. Uh, so uh, kind of a new spin on our podcast, which I'm really looking forward to. And then, of course... Uh, w- it would not be a year if it wasn't for the Ephrata Brew yes. Fest. I'm so sty- uh, st- stoked and <laughs> psyched. <laughs> I'm so stoked. Yeah. So recording there. Stoked and psyched that we are actually recording yes, there now. This we have year, been there several years in a row. We are. There will be more breweries than ever, which they always try to do every year. They try to invite more and more, which I uh, always have. I always get to put my push in there and say who I kind of want to be there, uh, which is awesome. They're great people and I love that we have a say in some stuff there. But uh, the third annual Effort to Beer Fest will be on Saturday, June 22nd. Tickets are now on sale. You remember when Steph said that she could easily choose the 50% of the population she wanted to kill with a snap? No, I said 50% of the hops I would kill. The oh, population. The population. 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 I'm not killing she people. She also likes to pick and choose the breweries what that get the to hell? be at Fest. I do like to pick and choose the breweries that get to. Well, I suggest breweries that should be at Fest. Hey, man. I suggest. That area is not <laughs> Mainly because I know the breweries that don't want to do Fest. That's true. But that area is not wanting for awesome breweries. Like the effort of that whole area. I mean, oh, for sure. Yeah, but um, they celebrate a lot of Lancaster County breweries. It is an awesome time. Uh, They put on a really good event, and every year it gets better and better, and we're recording this year, so that's that's exciting. One more, and then I'm done talking. Sunday, September 30th. So for those of you that that work in the service industry and you never get Fridays and Saturdays off, here is one for you. We will be recording at Wine and Dinosaurs um, at the Delaware Museum of Natural History. And for longtime listeners will remember, our 99th episode was the last time that we recorded at that event um they have invited us back before and it, we could not make it work so they invited us 10 months ahead of time this time <laughs> so we could make it work so we will be there and we are super excited oh because God. they're awesome people and we get to connect with amazing breweries especially a lot of delaware breweries that we wouldn't otherwise get to connect with my goal for so, this year my goal for this year is to interview a dinosaur yeah and i was gonna say like uh, fucking dinosaurs that place is so cool 
Remember they it had the, the really T-Rex right there with like, the delay in the hat and the sunglasses? Yeah, we took our picture That was with super him. fucking cool. I would go we there. We were wearing our 100th episode shirt. No, no, no. no. They, so they had the dude that was in the T-Rex, like, in yeah, yeah, costume. The, yeah, yeah. But the actual T-Rex skeleton yeah. had a lay in a hat oh, and yeah, sunglasses yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. That I, was really cool. I would go there and bring our own beer when there's not a fest and I know. just sit down and drink <laughs> yeah. and record oh, a podcast. So great. <laughs> it's oh, it's so great. It's such a cool place. Anyway, okay. I can't wait for that. I think I remembered to say everything yes. I needed to say. Yes, and if you out there in the podcast land uh, want or are interested in these events or want to go but you're not able to, like Wayne said, make sure you you listen to these episodes. You can follow us online. Uh, Twitter and Instagram are at Beer Busters. Facebook is Beer Busters Podcast. There's always Patreon.com slash Beer Busters where you can see all the cool behind-the-scenes stuff like Todd's Punishment. Yes. <laughs> that will be coming up soon. Yes. Before my punishment, just uh, I want to... Shout out uh, my family. Yes. Uh, I mean my brewery family. Yes. And that, and that means everyone. Well, and who, your family family. <laughs> and everyone who works there. They they do a tremendous job. Um, they keep the customers happy. And, uh, you know, they like the beer. And uh, we only have one rule, and that's really to have fun. That's yeah. great. That's how it should be. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's all we do is we want to have fun. Good. Right. It is such a welcoming environment when you come there. It's it's such a, it's a place that you want to drink and you want to come back because your staff does do a really, really good job of making everyone feel part of the family, whether it's your first time coming to Broken Chair or your 12th time coming to Broken Chair. Um, they do a good job at that. So, yes, cheers to the family and the beer family. That is Absolutely. great. Some of that which are awesome. both. Uh, and that being noted, we obviously can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you oh, so yes. much. Well, I'm, I, you know, I'm glad I did it. This is that, uh, I know this it was is, a long this drive. Is re- this is really cool. <laughs> I, 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 such a long enjoy drive. doing it. Yes, it's the drive home. <laughs> That's long. <laughs> All two miles. Yeah, we should have had. You, we should have had Rich just go pick you up. Yeah, we could have right. given you like the VIP treatment That's if true. I would have known That's you were true. so close. Oh, that would have been cool. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was a blast. Uh, the beers are, are fantastic, and uh, it hurts me. That I haven't been to Broken Chair in, in the times I've come back to Reading. However, I, I promise you, next time I'm in the area, that will change. That's good. Yeah, you got to go. It's a fun place. I, I can't wait to check it out in person. Uh, but unfortunately, this does bring us to the end of another episode of Beer Busters. Uh, <laughs> You're making noises he's trying to avoid. I love well, it. no, it's it, well, <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Seriously, these beers are incredible. That coconut stout, and I, I, I hope you get barrels soon, and you eat stuff in there, and let me know when it happens so I can drink right. them. <laughs> well, I am Dan Baker. I am joined by my co-host and brewologist, Steph Hefner, and of course the demented and fermented Wayne Baker. Just remember, no squids were harmed in the making of this episode, and we'll see you next time. Break the chair, save the beer. <laughs>